So in this module, we're going to be looking at now how to connect uh, devices through the access point IoT gateway into the IoT controller and then using the plugins connect it to external services. So this particular demonstration, we're going to show how to use BLE beacons to connect and provide BLE beaconing data, for example, iBeacon into a third party application and show the location and all the information around where that device is within a building or within a, an environment. So as we look at our architecture again, you can see we have our, our access point on the edge, which is connected using the i100 radio to a series of BLE devices. Now, rather than being a direct connection point to point, which you normally see with handsets and headsets, we're actually able to detect beacons. So devices that are mobile, battery powered and can move around the building, we're able to detect those and uh, provide the information about what that beacon is that we've seen, where we've seen it, the time that it was uh, located, and also information about uh, the RSSI and, and the payload that that beacon is transmitted. We're able to detect that at the IoT access point and then forward it over our IoT network and into our IoT controller. Now, within the IoT controller, we have the ability to view that beacon information, um, but more importantly, we want to actually do something with it. So using our iBeacon plugin now, we're able to forward all iBeacon data that we see on the edge, we're able to forward it out to a third party management system. Now, in the demonstration we're going to show, we're going to use a rules engine to receive that data, but we could just as easily forward that to a cloud service or any of our third party partners uh, based on standard generic iBeacon payloads. OK, so here we're now going to actually onboard a access point and configure it as an IoT gateway within our IoT controller. So we have our IoT controller running here and we're running the version 1.6 in this particular case because I want to show some of the new advantages and capabilities. So here we have our, our access point and you can see on the dashboard we currently have uh, one uh, device but it's unapproved so we can go and look at our gateways you can see we have one R510 and we'll we're actually now going to onboard a brand new uh, access point configure it as a gateway and then configure that radio so the first thing we need to do is go into our smart zone and we need to look at our access point so we've created and configured an, an existing access point and we've told it to uh, to boot and connect so we, this is the access point here and we've we've just renamed it and we're actually now moving that into our IOT zone for 1.6 with the relevant firmware and you can see here so the H510 Office 101 BLE is the name of the access point and if we select the configuration of that access point you'll see we've set up some additional information which we're going to use specifically for BLE and for the iBeacon plugin that we're going to use so we've configured the name and the description we've also overridden the default uh, location ID and we're using a new ID, which is going to be specific to where this access point is located within the building. So I've given it a name of Office 101, um, and that will be referenced in the API as we push information from the IoT controller into our application or our rules engine. In addition to the location information, we're also going to provide GPS location. So this access point doesn't have a GPS receiver, um, whereas uh, so in this particular case, we're going to manually set the location of the access point using the GPS latitude and longitude information. Um, additionally, we can set the floor information within the uh, within the virtual smart zone and configure that. So we have the latitude, the longitude, the floor and the name of the specific room where this access point has been placed within the building. Um, there are plenty of other options we can configure in here, but those are the important ones that we need when we're starting to look at how to use Bluetooth and BLE uh, for a beacon detection within the IoT controller. So we can click OK on that. And that will now push and update that configuration down into the uh, access point along with the version of firmware that we're interested in for, for this particular zone where this access point is located. So you'll see in this particular case, I'm running the, uh, the one five, uh, sorry, 5210 version, which is the version for the 1.6 IoT controller. So here now on our dashboard, you can see the, the current configuration of our IoT 
controller. So one of the quick things we're going to do here is we're also going to provide some additional information around the configuration of the device and the uh, the access points on the dashboard. So we can actually now see the, the plugins that are currently configured and uh, all the devices that are currently seen and configured. And then interestingly, from our perspective, is going to be the beacons. So how many beacons is the network seeing? And at the moment we have zero because we have no BLE enabled uh, gateways. So if we come to our access points and what we'll now do is wait for the uh, access point to be configured, upload the firmware and, and it will then broadcast itself within the network and for the IoT controller. So after a few seconds, you can now see that the access point has declared itself to the IoT controller. So you can see we configured this access point um, with the name that we configured within the virtual smart zone and that it's now been uh, detected. So what we'll do is we'll now go ahead and approve this uh, within the IoT controller so that the IoT controller can take uh, take control of the, uh, the IoT functionalities of this particular access point. So we've successfully approved that access point. So we, uh, we're basically now able to communicate with that and, uh, and figure out exactly what's going on. So we'll just need to wait for it to initialize the, uh, the radio, bring up the IoT gateway service on the access point, um, make sure the firmware on the uh, I100 dongle is up to date and make sure that it initializes and reconfigures. So we can see what's going on in the background here. We can see that the device is reset and we can just monitor any issues or anything that's going on within our debug window. But uh, we'll see most of this now coming up in here within the next few seconds. OK, so after a few seconds, you can now see that the, the Zigbee, uh, the radio, the I100 has now come up and it's come up in Zigbee mode in this particular case. Now, because we're going to be doing uh, BLE for this, this demonstration and for this example, we need to change this radio. So what we'll do is we'll open the, uh, the IoT radio and we'll change its current configuration. So we'll come down to the radio zero, which in this particular access point is the I100, and we'll change that into BLE mode. Um, that's all we need to do for this particular uh, application. So we'll switch that now into BLE mode and we, we can basically close this. And now we just need to wait for the IoT gateway to reconfigure the radio on the access point and switch it between Zigbee and BLE mode. So we can just uh, wait for a few seconds while it goes through the process. Now during this, the IoT gateway will you know, also uh, change any firmware configuration, radio settings that are specific for BLE or Zigbee switching. And then when it's finished, it will then uh, come back online. And there we go. So you can now see that the radio has come back online. So the IoT gateway service is green, indicating that it's back online and the protocol has now been switched to BLE. So again, if we open the, uh, the configuration for the gateway, you can now see that it's configured as BLE. And now the dashboard has actually changed. So now you can see we have some different plugins that are enabled and configurable. And we're actually, you can go in and manually select these. Now in our case, we're actually gonna do this uh, through the plugin. So that's the end of the configuration of the access point. So now we can go and actually configure the, the plugin. We do that by going to the administration panel and we go to our plugins panel. So here now we can select our drop down and the specific one we're going to do is for iBeacon. So we select our iBeacon uh, plugin and we activate that. Now, what we're going to do in here is first thing we need to do is to globally enable the connector on all the access points. So this will now mean any BLE access points in the network are now able to support this, this plugin. If we wanted to do it manually, we'd have to go into each individual access point and, and select that we wanted to support IB forwarding. But in our case, we're going to support it on all access points. Next thing we need is uh, a key. Now the key would be to authenticate or to process data that we're pushing to a specific service. So if you're pushing to a cloud service, Service or to a third party application, they may have some kind of encryption or security key. Um, in my particular case, uh, we're going to push to a, uh, a generic server, so we don't need this, but we'll just put a value in here uh, to make the, the rules happy. So I don't need anything exciting, just a, a value in here. The next thing we need to do is to enter in the destination URL of the, uh, the place that's going to receive our data stream. So in this particular case, I'm going to push it to a local uh, Ubuntu 
node red server so it's our http 192.168.111.120 so this is ju this is just a ubuntu machine running a standard node red instance um, and then we also can choose the port that we want to shoot the data to so i'm going to be sending to a node red which is on port 1880 but if we had our an internal iot controller or some other application then we may have different ports the next thing we need to do is we need to choose the endpoint that we want to send the data to so um, this is basically going to do an http post of the data so here we can actually now define exactly where we want that to go to so i'm going to write this out to a new url which i'm going to call ibeacon uh, so it's going to be called forward slash iot ibeacon and we can also filter anything in the uuid so if there is anything specific or a specific type of beacon that we're looking for we can filter those and only provide those to our rules engine or to our end application so that we're filtering and looking for one specific vendor i'm going to just forward everything in this application and when we've done that we can then click apply so now we've configured our ibeacon plugin and before we go and actually uh look at an application to, to decode that we can actually use the dashboard to see what's going on so if we go to our main dashboard you can actually get an overview of what's going on within our network so you can see we've configured our ibeacon plugin so it's showing as green so it's been activated but also you can see that the iot controller has actually already detected that there are five beacons in close proximity to the the access points that are around us and we can see that the one access point that has been configured for bluetooth is now reporting five beacons uh, nearby so again within within the iot controller we can also now go in and look at the number of devices and we can see the number of beacons and we select the access point and it will show all of the beacons that uh, that access point is able to see and where those beacons are including their payload so we actually have some diagnostic capability built into the iot controllers dashboard that allow us to see what's going on from a ble perspective but more importantly now we now need to feed that information into our third party application okay so now that we're at our rules engine you can see i'm connected to the rules engine on 192.168.111.120 on port 1880 so this is the the rules engine that we've told the iot controller to forward all ble data to so what we need to do is we need to provide a location within our flow for that data to arrive so what we're going to do is we'll scroll down our list of nodes and we're going to basically have a uh a, an http in node um, and we're going to connect that to the uh, iot uh, controller so we're going to receive the data on a post so the iot controller is going to post that to us and we need a uh, a url that that's going to be posted into so if you remember it was ibeacon so it's iot ibeacon and we're done on that so that will now any posts to this ip and this port and to this destination url will now come in here so one of the other things we need to do is we need to put a response in here so when we receive a message from the iot controller we need to respond back with a confirmation that we've received that uh, that packet and then the next thing we need to do is we need to see the data when it comes in so what we'll do is we'll put a, a debug node in here that allows us to view that uh, data and i'm going to look at the entire message that comes in and we're going to dump that out into the the debug window over here so that should be everything that we now need to uh, to receive data from the iot controller that's received from the uh, from the beacons and there we go so we've restarted the system and now we're getting messages coming in already so here now you can see we've got lots and lots of messages coming in uh, from on this node so what we'll do is we'll we'll clear the uh, the log so we can just pick one and we'll actually then go in and take a look at that data so we'll take a message there's a message received and the iot controller is sending us these packets every second so it will aggregate all of the beacons that it receives in a second and then send us one message a second then if we look at what's actually being sent by the controller we can break that down so we have a payload and, and some other information the payload is the bit we're interested in what you can now do is you can get information about the access point that is sending this data so you can see the latitude and the longitude of the uh the access point and this is this was set 
in the virtual smart zone when we first provisioned the access point. So the, when we change the settings in the virtual smart zone, that information is then configured and sent to the access point. And every time we get a beacon update from that AP, it tells us exactly where that access point is. So we get the latitude, we get the longitude, we also get the altitude, we get the access point's name, and also we get the AP location. So now we know that this particular access point is in the Office 101 as we defined in Virtual Smart Zone. We get the information about the vendor ID for the beacons that we're specifically being receiving data for. And now, importantly, we can actually go in and take a look at the events. So you can see here our events. This is a list of all of the beacons that the access point can see which have been forwarded to the controller. So now you can see we have an array of five beacons that have been seen and we can go in and look at each individual beacon one at a time so our first beacon we have its device euid we have the timestamp that that beacon was seen we have the rssi of the uh, access points signal strength to that beacon so we can get a rough estimate of how far away that beacon is from the access point and then we have the payload that the beacon is sending so this can be encoded and, and, and can provide lots of additional information, but this is the, the full payload as prevent, presented by the beacon into the access point through the controller and now into our application to be decoded, processed and dealt with. And we have that for each of the different access point uh, beacons that have been seen. So you can see here for five beacons that we've got, we can see each of the different devices, we can see each of the different MAC addresses, device EUIDs, and then we also have all the information in the data about that specific beacon. So that completes the uh, integration, operation, and setup using an iBeacon uh, plugin on the IoT controller. Mm -hmm.